We are here today talking about the brand new Shimano 105 group set, which has, let's say, been slightly controversial um, in its well in its release. So we're talking about this before um, the embargo has been uh, been lifted. So you guys will be, uh, yeah, you you guys hopefully will be hearing it for the first or second time from us. So I mean, Liam, you're probably the expert on this because you have tested the Dura Ace the El Tigre, um, and I assume you're probably going to be looking at this as well. So maybe you can give us a few details. Um, basically, this takes most of the tech that you'll find in the more expensive stuff, as is usually the case with um, 105 versus El Tigre and Dura Ace, and it just puts it in a cheaper package and you lose a few of the minor features. So gone with this group set are the electronic limit um, settings for both mechs. Um, can't say I'm that bothered. A screw's always been fine. Um, and But you do also lose the hood buttons, which they control your computer screen or kind of uh, secondary um, features. Is that an issue for most people? I don't think so. What are we seeing with this? Well, we're seeing the gearing is much more set up for your everyday cyclist. So you've got an, uh, what are they, 11 to 34 or 11 to 36 tooth cassette options. Um, that's going to give you a massive spread, um, but also nice spinny gears for the climbs. And they are doing it with, an, uh, what is it, a 34, 50 chain set and a 52, 36 chain set. Those are the two combinations. That's how you can have your gears set up. You can still get 140 millimeter rotors if you want. Um, it's all still wireless. It all talks to your phone without needing extra things. So, yeah, in terms of, I think Shimano has been quite sensible with what it's providing um, and where it's saving money. Um, one of the most obvious cost savings is that the front derailleur body is a bit bigger. Does anyone care? Not really. It's going to sit, it's going to maybe lose you maybe a what. So can I ask then, you said at the start um, that this, George, this was somewhat controversial. What What's controversial about it? I think possibly one of the, the things that I find most, let's say controversial, and I think other people are going to find most controversial is that to me, 105 has always been seen as the the cheapest version of the performance kind of group sets. I think anything below 105, you you know, is good, but you wouldn't really see any. You, you you're unlikely to see anybody even at like a you know third you know third or fourth category using it. You know, 105 generally tends to be the the kind of entry level, but now because you can only get it in electric or well, in electronic there's no mechanical that suddenly means that the price jumps pretty much to double what it was as an entry level before um so i mean matt maybe you could give us a little bit of insight about your perspective on on that as kind of you know around the pricing yeah I, I agree that <clears throat> excuse me um 105 has traditionally been the kind of every man group set it's the one it and uh, they've Shimano quite often talk about it as being the world's most popular group set, which it is in terms of numbers sold. And, you know, I think some people identify themselves a little bit via the group set. You know, if you're a racer, you're a top level racer, you're on Dura Race or Slam Red or whatever you're on. And, you know, I think that some people do label themselves a little bit. I'm a, you know, not, you know, not going being too pompous about it people might label themselves i'm a 105 kind of type of a rider so i can imagine some people feeling a bit put out that they're not going to be able to perhaps get 105 in disc brake or in um, rim brake or um, mechanical shift versions but you know times change at the end of the day yeah i'm just I, well you know all know that i've been quite I, I've taken the the strong, un, unusually for me, I'm taking the well. Who who would want who you know if you if you really wanted to want to, 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 to carry on with 105 mechanical, there's not going to be anything to stop you because the previous version of 105 will still be available. Um, spares for it will be available. 
Um, and if you want, if you still want to identify as a 105 person, well, you can buy 105 on, a new, on your next bike. It'll just have disc brakes and DI2. And, and to be honest, it probably won't be that much more expensive. I mean, it's going to be on a more expensive bike because bikes are getting more expensive. So 105 is not as affordable a group set as it once was. And it already isn't. It's not, no. But, um, yeah, I mean, t- to be fair, Shimano have kept the price. The price comparison, I think uh, Shimano are saying something like 1700 and. 30 uh, rrp for um new 105 um which is quite a way under ultegra uh, it, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and ultegra is quite a way under uh, duros i know that but what i'm saying is that most people that's not how most people buy their group sets is it they buy them on their bikes i mean there are people who buy yeah, them they so. do totally they do but you know that's going to be reflected in um bike prices isn't it so you know the, if you you're not going to be able to get a 105 bike as cheap as you used to be able to get a 105 bike is is the bottom line what's going to make people it's the principle isn't it it's like before i could um you know if i, I knew my budget would stretch to a bike with 105 and I'm, I'm looking at the prices of uh so ribble who are you know considered a, a quite affordable bike brand and i'm seeing here bikes with 105 di2 uh, the new version of it, they're come like the top end Ribble Ultra SLR, £4,499. I mean, yeah, like the group set you're getting on that is like, like I remember buying a specialized tarmac for 2000 which was expensive in 2012 with 105 on it. But it's just the fact that even though the technology and the gearing I'm getting is better, you just couldn't. Uh, I think, the, you know, you just couldn't charge that much for a bike with 105 on it before. So people now, I get they, or there might be a minority. And yet I think the predictions that Tony was were making are probably correct, that there, there are going to be a noisy few who are going to be an- annoyed, possibly even angry about this. That like, well, I just feel like I can't afford it. And before I used to buy 105 and now I ain't going to be able to. I'm going to have to buy Tiagra, you know. Yeah, but that's on your next bike, isn't it? Because either you're either who, what you buy one hundred and five for. You're either like you've got one hundred and five mechanical, so you're buying spare parts where you can carry on doing that, or you want to build up a frame frame set, um, and you want to use new one hundred and five, or you want to use one hundred and five um, twelve speed mechanical. I mean, is, is anyone offering twelve speed mechanical? I don't think so. Camp bags um, still are, aren't they? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean so, that fits for yeah, them, well, they, doesn't it? Because they, they are they they have a I wouldn't say niche, but their customer base are more um, how should we call? But you know, even if you're building a frame set up, a lot of people build a frame set up donating the. That's the way I've always done it. I've just taken the group set off the bike that I've stopped riding and put it on a new one, maybe with some other new bits. Um, so uh, it just seems to me that um, if there was a market, if Shimano thought there was a market for mechanical 105, they'd make it as simple as that. And, and, and the other thing I, I suppose I'd say is we've got to remember who are, who are Shimano's customers. Most of their customers are actually not the bike buying or the component buying public. They're bike companies. Bike companies clearly asking Shimano based on what their customers, who are, you know, us and the people watching this video, are buying and if they're not buying bikes with rim brakes um and they want bikes with di2 and to be honest you know the case for di2 is simply i can remember when di2 came out i'm old enough to have been at the launch of di2 um and when it came out everyone thought oh it's going to be like it's going to be really um uh fragile and like it's not going to be durable um, it's not going to last. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. Well, actually, it's completely the opposite. It just works in the winter. It doesn't matter what you. It's super tough. It, it super reliable. Why wouldn't you want it? Once you've tried it, it, it you know your ch- even down to things like people forget it. You know the auto trim function on the chain at the front. You just don't, you don't get that on on mechanical. Um, you know, it always puts the chain line in the optimum position. So, you you know, your chain's running better. It wears less, all that stuff. There's, there are very few downsides. The only downside I can think of to DI2 
is possibly, which is, it will be way down the line for most people, is the fact that the, I hear that the batteries are um, becoming more expensive um, and hard to find, or there can be. There has been some supply issue for batteries, I think, on some versions of DI2. But I mean, I've got, I've had DI2 since, um, um, the Altegra version I've got is the first one, I think, that we had in on test and went around a load of bikes and then I ended up inheriting it. But it's still on the same battery that it had then. And, you know, I ride my bike a lot. You know, I don't do super big miles, but I do like ride it most every day. And I'm riding up and down hills where it's like I'm changing gear a lot. I say. I mean, Liam, do you th- have you been in contact with um, Shimano or with Madison, who are Shimano's UK distributor, uh, about any of this? I mean, do they have anything, you know, how, how are they saying, you know, what, I don't want to say justifying it, but how are they kind of um, promoting this? The only thing that they've said is that kind of this new stuff is as you see. So it is going to be wireless. It's going to be 12 speed and it's going to be disc. They've not said anything explicit about it n- never becoming, you know, the, the mechanical side and rim brake side coming to the new stuff. But I mean, what they've said suggests that that's not going to happen, which for me is a shame, really. Um, I'd like to see the rim brake tech and I'd like to see the mechanical tech kind of keep progressing because away from the people that just buy a new bike and stuff. And I accept that that is the big part of the market. Um, for, for From my experience, the I feel like the majority of junior racers and low-end racers, kind of our bikes run on mechanical 105 because it works, it's very good, and it's cheap. So to see that kind of base race um, level stepping up in price, I I find that just to be a, a bit of a shame. Even though I know that we're going to be able to get the old stuff for a while. But like like Tony said, you, you are a minority, aren't you? And they're not, unfortunately, they're not really catering to you. That's what I mean, the, the, the people who... Because like I said, the fact they've uh, ditched off the bigger chain ring as well it's like that that i don't think it's conspiracy to say that there's people who like the disc brake thing we always hear all oh, they're pushing forcing disc brakes on us and that's why but like the, the reality is that they stop you better I don't know that's why the uh disc brakes are becoming if you talk to bike brands who offer both they'll tell you that they sell like nearly all they they sell out the disc brakes and there's the, the rim brake stuff is I think it, it can be a little bit the other way around, can't it? Because, like, this, this launch suggests to me that they are pushing – well, they're not put they're, – you're saying, and, and Shimano will say, it's because that's what people are asking for, so this is what we've done. But if you go into a bike shop and you know nothing – I think a, a lot of people buying bikes at the three, four grand level, they won't be expi- – they, they'll be, you know, entering road cycling for, like, the, you know – the first time or they're, or they're upgrading for the first time. And if you say what's better mechanical rim brake or then the bike shop's going to say, Oh no, you want a let, you want electric, you want 12 speed. So I think it does go a bit both ways. And, and that's what I mean. The, um, the smaller gearing choices would suggest that they are, you know, that they're trying to say to people who aren't racing, um, you need electronic gears, you need 12 speed gears, you know, you need the higher end stuff. I have to say, if we, if we move away from cost, I think realistically in use, this is going to be an absolute peach of a group set. We're talking about probably incredible shifting, incredible braking, because the 105 system inherits the 10% extra pad clearance from the old, uh, from the new Ultegra and Dura stuff. You put all of that together in a package that's costing what 1,700 quid, one yeah, something like that. I think. In terms of what you're actually getting for your money, this is going to be possibly a more popular group set than the Disc 105 was. Yeah, we should say that sometimes we get um, products ahead of launch, so we get the chance to review them in time for for 
um, the embargo lifting. But this time around, we haven't even seen uh, 105 Di2, let alone uh, ridden it. So, um, but yeah, assuming as Liam says, the technology trickles down in the way that it's expected to uh, successfully from the, from the higher level group sets. On paper, at least, this is uh, this is a really cool um, addition, and it you know use the phrase game changer from time to time but it, you know it really could be we also haven't used we the, the another phrase we haven't used or uh, is which always we always normally use when a new group set launches and it's really impressive I and mean, we're assuming that 105 is going to be impressive and we've used it with 105 on numerous occasions is it's so good why do you need altegra so maybe it might put Altegra in, into question. In fact, funny enough, the last time I heard it was when t- the l- last iteration of Tiagra launched. And the first time ever I heard somebody say, it's so good, why do you need 105? Um, so to be honest, maybe the, the, technol- the technological development of rim brake, um, you know, mechanical shifting, we'll, we'll just carry on with Tiagra. And Tiagra is a really good group set. Um, so maybe it's just going to get better. And actually, Tiagra is starting to appear on more expensive bikes. You know, certainly bikes pushing up towards two grand have started to have Tiagra on it, which is something you would never have seen, you know, pre-pandemic. I mean, do, do we think that we're likely to see DI2 trickle even further? Well, they said they would, Shimano said they would never do it with, uh, yeah, they said they would never do what, yeah, it would, it would have to be, uh, it would be a long way down the line if it happens. Um, I tell you what though, here's, I'll throw this out there. One of the reasons they might be doing, um, DI2, 105 DI2 is it may be it's actually cheaper to make than, um, than, than, and, and cheaper for bike companies to assemble than than putting um, a mechanical group set on a bike. Yeah, a switch is a pretty simple mechanism. The switches, are, um, yeah, it's just some, it's some switches and some batteries, and some and some thinner cable. Yeah, we'll see on Tiagra. Tiagra's currently so at the moment we've got Dura Ace twelve speed, Altegra twelve speed, new one hundred and five that's twelve speed, Tiagra is 10 speed still isn't it so we've not got an 11 speed group set sat in the mix at the moment so presumably uh Tiagra will be upgraded next i mean you would think from a from a bike company point of view you would be pushing for them to like well they'd definitely be pushing to go to 11 speed pretty quickly because Tiagra is as i say appearing on bikes that are not cheap and as a cons- you know that that even a couple two three years ago You'd expect it to have a much higher um, level of group set on and more gears. I mean, we, we're, we're thinking about, I mean, from Shimano's point of view, Shimano don't care that much. I mean, it's a secondary uh, care of theirs, which groups that you go for. Their main thing is we want you on Shimano. They want to put products out there that people are buy. So, you know, if SRAM's up the game with, in terms of the number and the execution of their electronic group sets, Shimano's kind of hardly going to, you know, if it needs to eat its words and say and go back on its um, what it said to never uh, produce 105 Di2, then obviously it's going to do that. And, you know, who knows what it'll think in 12 months' time with Tiagra or whatever. I, yeah, no, totally agree. And, the, I mean, the other thing about is that we haven't really talked about is, is wirelessness. Ness. Wirelessness is pointless. For the majority of people, actually, uh, here's here's a here's some people who it's not pointless for people who build bikes. So bike companies, it's not pointless for them because it saves it saves you a load of time um, uh, and a load of setting setting up costs. And if actually wireless is cheap, to, if wireless group sets are cheap to make, why wouldn't you put them on a bike? But you've got to you've got to wire the system between the derailleurs and the battery fair play yeah i totally agree with you there i mean it just seems to me that what you know the the next step is for for shimano surely to go completely wireless i think shram sacrifices some um shift speed for its true wireless flip that around and say for the majority of cyclists does that matter it matters if you're a racer doesn't matter if you're like out just hooning around the lanes on a saturday afternoon 
I think it matters more for ride feel because. But then surely it just seems that that's a, more a, uh, a question of sharpening up wireless technology. I think I think one one of the interesting things with Shimano is that they make a big deal about their proprietary wireless system, which they say is more secure, faster, more reliable than competitors, which would be SRAM. Um, whether it actually is, I'm not sure whether that's just marketing spiel. Um, who knows? But what I've felt with the new stuff is that it retains all of that speed that you had with the original DI2, but it has removed some of the cabling, which has to be, you know, really applauded. And if 105 brings that to the table as well, then I think personally it would blow Shram's rival group set out of the water. I wonder how much of it it was to do with uh, the introduction of rival because I've, you know, the bikes are, are more expensive now than they were even two, three years ago. But you look at you look at the co- the price of some bikes with full electronic rival, and it, it's pretty impressive, really, the price points that they are down to. Can anyone remember going back about five years? What you know when? how cheap a di2 when bikes were cheap but you know probably about five years ago they were a, a low you know they were at the dip in the in the in the pricing it all seems to go in cycles oh, pun. Um, but can anyone remember how cheap a di2 you could get a di2 bike for i bet decathlon must have done a di2 bike for like i don't know Two, under two grand. I think, I think it was around the two grand mark, wasn't it? Yeah, at one point, I seem to remember. You know, that's what a lot of 105 mechanical bikes are now. I'd say the full reason that Shimano has done this is because it was losing that kind of segment of the market where a bike shop would say, oh, you can have the Shimano mechanical and it's very good, but for an extra whatever it was, £1,000, you can have electronic gears. And people went, ooh, it makes a fun noise when you shift gear. Of of course, you'd have the, if you've got that money burning a hole in your pocket, which a lot of cyclists these days do, you're always going to go for the um, electronic. So I'd I'd imagine pretty much the entirety of the decision to launch 105DI2 was to regain some of that market. They've got to play the percentage game, of course, like any business, you know, they've got to go where they think the market market's going. They've got to provide for the, for the, what they see as the mass market. So, you know, plus the complicating factor, and I've no idea um, how much of a decision it is in, um, a factor it is in Shimano's decision-making at the moment, but getting enough product out there is really difficult. If you're going to get product out there, you can't meet demand. What what are you going to put out there? What's going to be your priority? It's going to be the most popular stuff that you can um, make some decent money on. Interesting to know, actually, if the, if the supply chain yeah is shorter, say, for an electronic group set than it is for a mechanical one. It's easier to have, you know, if you ever speak to the guys who actually produce it, you know, it's easier to have lines producing one thing than to have more lines producing more things. You get a greater productivity and, um, and slinging it all through um, similar lines. And, you know, obviously that's what they're about at the end of the day. They're all, they're, their job is to make a lot of money by providing people with what they want. And you can't argue that Shimano hasn't done a great job of that in the past and presumably will continue to do so. It was quite interesting when um, Ultegra, was launched alongside Durace, the the new DI2 stuff. And Shimano made a big thing about internally, the motors are the same. We haven't heard that with the 105 stuff. So, and the, I'm, I mentioned that the front derailleur shifter body is a little bit bigger. So obviously m- there's more stuff in there. So maybe Shimano has managed to produce a, a cheaper motor and their argument against 105 Di2 was always that they couldn't bring the cost of the electronics down to meet the kind of 105 level. Has anyone had a look and compared, say, the new 105 uh, motor size to an old version of Altegra? Yeah, it, it looks to me as though the old Altegra Endura Race um, Di2 
front derailleur is very similar in its outline of the body um, to the new 105. So whether they're taking that from the parts bin. Well, I mean, it's not a bad bin to be taken out of. If we, yeah, if we can uh, get hold of a group set, I don't think the first thing we want to do is take a Dremel to it. <laughs> we can have a look from the outside. Do we have any ETA on when we might be seeing it on Road CC? We've got a bike coming in allegedly in a couple of weeks that has it fitted. Um, we're not, you know, journalists aren't particularly high on anyone's um, uh, uh, list to get product out to because why create uh, even more demand when you can't satisfy it at the moment? So I don't imagine we'll be getting a group set to fit for ourselves for a while. Could be wrong. But um, some uh, bike brands are getting it about now. I think a couple have already got it. So we won't actually, I mean, there aren't going to be that, that that many bikes in the shops with it on for a while yet. No, um, we've, I've contacted quite a few people. Uh, a lot of people have said, well, we'll be on our 23 range, which will get announced at the normal time. A few people have told us about bikes that it's going to be on uh, straight away. They'll get it out as soon as possible. Obviously, um, try and ride that wave. But um, yeah, uh, if the last few months of uh, anything to go by uh, getting the hands-on product is going to be the tricky thing. It'd be interesting to see when actually they were selling it, you know, the group set itself in, uh, you know, various retailers. I mean, a few of my contacts wouldn't even, at the time of asking them, wouldn't even acknowledge the existence of 105DI2. So they really were playing um, the, you know, being very good with their embargo. Um and I was just like, well, I know it's coming. Just tell me about bike availability. The, the last time we sat down and chatted about Shimano, I think certain Mr. Stevenson was involved. And we kind of, we kind of as a group concluded we were a little bit underwhelmed. Um, we, basically, they just added another gear and uh, made it look a slightly bit different. Um, it's very good. But so what do we think this time around? I mean, I think it's a, it's a bolder decision, obviously, but... Again, we've just uh, we just added another cog, um, uh, you know. But it's are we are we underwhelmed? Are we overwhelmed? Are we... No, it's hard to say. Are we? Uh, how, how, we we don't know. We haven't tried it. I mean, I would. I personally wouldn't have been if I'd been in there. I'm not sure I'd have been underwhelmed by the, the Altegra either. But that's just me. I've, I'm on paper. Speak. If this, if you know, we can usually say Shimano is pretty reliable. Uh, uh, delivering what they promise uh and if they deliver what they're promising here i think it's pretty um pretty spectacular entry into the market really bringing electronic down to this price point really changed things massively i think if the motors in especially the front derailleur are even half as strong as the current ultegra enduro race i think this has the potential to be an absolute peach and possibly the most popular shimano group set ever Wow, that's yeah. I mean, I I think I think you you're right, but it, I think you know by the time this uh, podcast and the article is published tomorrow, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of noise. But I think that yeah, those people are going to have to accept that they are not like the you know the, the the people who build their own bikes, the people who are very very into cycling and and want to do it at a certain price point. I, are going to have to accept that maybe they're not the main target audience and this is you know that yeah this is the the thing that the mass the mass is want. i mean if as i say if shimano thought that they could sell loads of it they would make it it's simple as that isn't it and those people can probably comfort themselves with the fact well i say fact i'm just making a fact now a rumor let's say that 11 speed Tiagra is probably next summer's big launch. And why would you? It's going to be so good. Why would you need 105? 